כן? And then I'll send it to the other people. So this is recorded. Uh, hi, Jeff, how are you? <laughs> uh, how are you? So maybe, so maybe just in a few words, introduce yourself and maybe say some of the basic things that you think business owners should, should be aware of today. And then I will, we will ask you some questions and sure. hopefully get the answers. Sure. So Jeff Bruno, founder and CEO of Your Outsource CFO, YoCFO.com for short. Um, so I started in 2013 with the business with the idea of that the SMB marketplace, sort of one to $20 million, uh, was underserved from a CFO strategic level. Um, so we position ourselves at a, as a um, very well, uh, well cost model, um, low cost model in a sense with high value. Uh, and we offer um, ongoing retainer uh, type services. We want long-term relationships with businesses. We truly embed our CFOs in that company uh, to help along sort of every milestone that a company's looking to do towards growth. And of course, in this situation, we're there helping our clients uh, with crisis as well um, because we're intimate with their financials and, and where they need to be and mm -hmm. position themselves. So um, that's what we do. And uh, we are actively helping everyone right now with the loan process, the PPP, the other loans, um, sort of handholding through that and then looking at their budgets and projections and reorganizing for the next six to nine months. Uh, essentially throwing everything out and saying where are new our new projections and and that's sort of stage two of what we're doing right now is is that process so so thank you for coming and so uh jeff is also a tab member uh he's a tab member of a different unit so thank you for supporting us as well sure. uh we love to believe that we are a strong community and international community uh, so so from your from the from what you see today, I mean, so yeah, so most people applied for the loans. Uh, I do have some questions about the loans that have been sure. asked by members. Uh, but let's say people are past this process. So what what challenges do you see next for for people today? Well, there's really the question of the loan and how effective is it going to be for your business, right? So most people, I would say, I think almost all of our clients, uh, except for one or two, applied for it. Um, so question is, you know, it's a demand versus an employee structure. So when is your demand going to come back? Because the feds have put this limit on the forgiveness at an eight week mark. So once you get the funds, you have eight weeks to apply it towards payroll, a little bit towards rent and so on. And then it's, they'll forgive that piece of it. So that is the big battle that we're dealing with with some companies. I mean, one of our clients, you know, sells online products, and they're like, nobody's buying right now what we sell. So why would I even have pay? I don't need people. So what does it do any good for me? So that's the constant issue that we're facing. So what we're, we're sort of recommending to people is, look, it's at 1% loan. Um, so at a minimum, it's very cheap money. It's good to use that now to get your business back on its feet. Um, and then maybe take that money and, and use it right now for innovative stuff to accelerate your sales on the backside of this. Or maybe, you know, maybe you need to uh, uh, reposition some new hires uh, temporarily. Um, so we're looking at all different options on what people can do that for, um, use it for. So you got to be creative if you don't have the demand coming back to hire the people. Um, and so we're working with, with clients on that. So. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we see, I, I see some members, I actually got to a member today, they already approved for the money and they get the full amount tomorrow. And it's actually earlier than she wanted because they still cannot work. I mean, uh, they're not allowed to work as a business, uh, but they already get the money tomorrow. And some businesses didn't even get the response. So uh, are you familiar with those issues? I mean, Oh yeah, I'm seeing across the board. I'm, I, I'm seeing the larger banks actually are very bad at response. Um, the smaller banks have been more proactive. Uh, I was saying earlier on the last webinar that mid Penn bank and Republic have been responsive. Um, we've seen, um, some sort of no name banks like this one emigrant, emigrant bank. Um, 
did a loan real fast and the person got funding the last beginning of last week. Um, so it's sort of, uh, that's what we've been seeing and the funds are starting to come now though. Um, for sure. So mm-hmm. I, um, I know I'm getting funding tomorrow. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and the, the very class, classical question that comes up almost every session, can people apply to both loans? What both meaning EIDL? The, the, the EIDL and the PPP? They can. They can apply to both, sure. Uh, mm-hmm. If you receive any funds from EIDL, it comes off your forgiveness balance. So if you get 10000 as that grant, which is in question right now, whether they're going to actually give that full 10000 they're talking about they've been majorly oversubscribed. So they're cutting that down. Um, but yeah, they, you can and you can get both as long as they're used for different stuff. And I think, I think um, EIDL is going to be very, very little to businesses. It's just so swamped. Um, and, and, and I don't mean this in a sarcastic way, but in somewhat typical government fashion, <laughs> the SBA is behind on technology and so on. So they're real slow to, to do these direct, the EIDL is direct, not through banks. And the SBA is just overwhelmed. Uh, so that's one of the reasons the federal, res- federal government wanted to go through banks specifically for the PPP so it could be given out faster. Um, so I think that's what's going on there. Thank you. And any other questions? Uh, Mike, did you see any other questions? Claire, did you see other questions that people are asking? Um, I read somewhere that the AIDLs would, was going to be doled out based on $1,000 per employee. That was in an Inc. article. Have you seen that? Yep. That's some recent guidance. Yep. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, that's what it is. I mean, it's just because they're oversubscribed that they're, they're, they're having to cut it down. So, um, and they might, they might even put caps on, on, you know, the size of the business. Um, but I don't know yet. The full so I didn't apply for the PPP because it's just me and right. you know, I'm in my office, which is a percentage of my house. And it, and I had heard from a couple of people that it was complicated. Then I heard that it was easy. So for somebody like me in my situation where it's me and my, you know, whatever proportion of the house is considered my office, is it worth going through it to apply? For the PPP? Yeah. Um, I mean, sole proprietors now can apply as of the 10th. So, okay. I mean, you know, independent contractors in a sense. So, I mean, you can, I mean, I'm, do, I'm helping somebody this afternoon. One of my clients' husband is applying. Um, so, I mean, you certainly can. I, it's, it depends on the bank, on whether the banks are willing to do it for that small amount and whether they're, um, uh, you know, if you, if you have a bank already, that would be the best route um, because uh, the banks are getting fees on this from the government. They're getting 5% actually. Um, oh. as a fee directly from the government for these loans. Uh, but you know, if it's a $10,000 loan or something, they're just not that interested in doing it. <laughs> right. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Well, I already talked to first trust. I've been with them for 25 years. So, they and there's, yeah, they do it. I mean, it's worth it to you in the sense of, you know, you could probably get a decent portion of that forgiven, I would think. Um, right. So, yeah. All right, thanks. How do you, uh, Jeff, for the independent contractor, since that's all new and, and we don't have a ton of, I, I don't know that there's a ton of guidance on it. I was trying to pull that from a, a webinar, a legal webinar earlier today. Um, but, but how do they determine forgiveness for the independent contractors? It's very, very new, right? I, I, I agree. It, it, it's the same kind of construct. I think I, I would, I would, I'm sure it counts rent a little bit or membership at a co-working space or something. I'm sure something like that would count as part of it. But then the question is, what's the pay component? Like, do exactly. I get given for paying myself, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the nobody really knows what they're doing with that yet. Um, yeah, there was, a, and and the lawyers were talking a little bit about um, the 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 challenge and really when it comes to getting your forgiveness to demonstrate that um, these people would have been out of work otherwise. Right. That they think that there's going to be somewhat of a burden of proof to demonstrate that I actually use the money to save jobs. There probably will be because in a company it's different because if you retain the people, even if you see a dip, obviously it's different, but for an individual, they might say, show me your revenue and show me your, you know, your dip, how you were were hit by this. 
Exactly. It's uh, a good yeah. point. And, and I think that's what's going to come out too. I, I, I'd be very careful to game the system as a company or an individual. I think they're going to get on this. That's why they specifically said, we're going to figure it out. Um, I think they're going to be like, if you do the normal stuff, I think you'll get most of it forgiven, you know? Um, that's all. That's, a, that's what I'm recommending to people. If you game it, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> so. Oh, not in trouble. You may just have to repay a loan that you didn't need. Not in trouble. That's <laughs> not the right word. Right. I mean, you'll, right, you, right. You'll have to repay it. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, to your point, it, it's 1% yeah. money. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's than anything out there right now. That's for sure. So. Definitely. Jeff, it regards, um, with, with regards to next steps, though, I mean, not, not all the questions are about PPP that we're hearing because um, for many businesses, it's behind them. They've applied and they've done whatever they can and the money's coming or the money's not coming or they don't know when the money's coming, but that's that. Uh, but there's a lot of things that we need to do as we plan out towards recovery, right? There's a lot of, whether it's, whether it's May or June or September, right, there will be a recovery. Um, so, so maybe, uh, you know, what are you guiding some of your clients to do with respect to, um, how to be, how to do financial, you know, forecasting and, and management for the next, you know, half year. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're recommending again, uh, keep liquidity high. Um, so keep enough cash in your bank or enough money on your line. Um, keep, uh, make sure that you, um, you downplay your, your revenues. Um, we're being very cautious there. Um, you know, c CEOs or founders a as a bunch tend to be very optimistic on things, even in, in scenarios like this. So um, I would say that, you know, if you have, if you're doing well in one area, one month, it might not do that well the next month, mm -hmm. um, the way the cycles are going to hit here and where things might be up and down in the next six to nine months. I do not think this is a straight recovery because it just can't be uh, with the way people are going to be scared about this. I mean, I'm talking to people that are like, I'm not, I'm not taking the train and I'm just driving. I'm the same way right now in my head. So what is that going to do? I mean, it's going to, it's going to cause all these different issues that people are going to be thinking about. Um, so I would bring those revenue numbers down. That's what we're recommending. So, we, we just, it's a, it's a very individualistic thing as well with the companies too, Mike, you know, like what are you, what are you selling and do you have new avenues for revenue or not? Um, so. Well, even, you know, one, one thing I, I I'm hearing from, even from the companies that whose revenues are up during this period of time. And there was a couple of them last month, who, or last week who told me that their March grew 20% over February. But what they're worried about is that, that that's just a temporary blip. And yep. then once people start to focus on recovery, they're not going to be buying services at the same, in the same way to your point. So, um, so it's very difficult to forecast now. Um, so while you have it, put it away um, because we don't know what's coming next. Yes. Yes. While you have it put it away, I think, I mean, I can't speak this directly, but I think the shock of this on the banking system and because liquidity from the Fed is so high right now, that there'll probably be a good period here where the banks are not going to cause a lot of, uh, put a lot of pressure on companies. What I mean, I, this is a guess, obviously, but what I mean is if you have a good relationship with your bank, they're not going to say, oh, you missed your covenant because your net profit was down, so we're going to close out your line. I think there's going to be some leniency there, uh, especially if they want to retain your business for the longer run. Um, I mean, because in, in historic downturns, you know, that's what causes bankruptcies is calling the lines or calling the loans. Um, so long as banks stay off of that and give you enough room, you just got to plan. Now, net into 21, everybody be, has got to be careful. So that's why you want to keep enough cash on hand to pay down those things in, in 21. Uh, might be a different story. So that's part of the planning as well. Mm -hmm. So... And, and and the banks are go. I mean, a lot of people are not going to pay a lot of lot of their ongoing payments. So so when, so not from legal view, from financial view. If I'm a business owner and I want to work my cash flow and keep money, so there are certain things I don't want to pay. Uh, from 
I would say from more like accounting point of view, what should I not pay first and what should I pay? What should you not pay first? Well, it depends a little bit on, on what you can. And I mean, like if you have a supply, if you have a scenario where you're stuck with a supplier, um, that's a critical supply to your business, um, you have to pay them or they will cut off supply. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a hard thing. If you're, unfortunately, some of the discretionary stuff is your typical stuff, like, uh, you know, consulting, uh, marketing, even though I would argue in some cases that that's more of a need now for some businesses to reposition themselves. Um, they view that as something they can ease off on the payments there. Um, and, you know, then catch up, so to speak on that. So you got to prioritize that way. Um, I would say that um, if you can um, reorganize with your bank, a amortization or a push out on the note, do that now, maybe they'll say, okay, we'll add a year or two amortization, which takes your payment down from 5,000 a month to 4,000 a month. Um, that would be ways to maneuver some of your cash right now when banks might look at that. Um, but I would not default on things like that because it, it, you'll need, you'll need the bank to be your advocate going into the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, um, and above all pay your coaches first. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was saying that. <laughs> I think it's more needed now. <laughs> I mean, I can share with, I mean, I sh I'm sharing with everyone, but uh, yeah. there are so many opportunities that um, in our communication with people that we work with today, uh, we help them find in this situation and they don't sometimes see because they are struggling with the issues that we are talking right now, you know, sure. cash flow and payment and which employee to leave, which employee not to leave, you know, but some businesses have huge opportunities now. I mean, Huge, huge. I mean, uh, there can be, I was saying in an earlier webinar with Lisa Peskin uh, that there are, I think there are a lot of opportunities online now mm -hmm. um, for services before that we could not do. Like this, just this, so many people are getting so much more comfortable to than meeting in person. Uh, I, I just think that there's so much opportunity there. Um, so mm -hmm. think, think about that as a business owner and try to pivot that way. Um, and get good at it, please. <laughs> you know, that's important. I think we're um, getting better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or get better at least. Yeah. We adjust it. Yeah. Uh -huh. so so it's you... important that like us on this call. <laughs> um, so I mean, we just created a webinar and, and it was really easy to do. Um, but this is it. This is the new, the new way we are today. Uh, yeah. And we promise to take only half an hour of your time. So maybe last one or two questions, anyone or comments? Sure. Um. No, I appreciate this. It's been very helpful. Thank you. Sure. And, you know, I'm like, uh, like uh, the go-giver by uh, uh, Bob Berg. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. I honestly, I'm here to help anybody. Um, I, Mike's very similar like that. Um, and I, you know, pick my brain, shoot me an email. I'm no problem. Uh, I've been doing it since I started this business. So, um, and I can do to help. Yeah. And I'm going to share this recording with all the people that were supposed to be in this meeting, uh, with your contact information. So sure. feel free to answer those questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> all Great. right. Have a good Thanks. day. Thanks so much, Jeff. Sure. No problem. Thank you.